Good day. Welcome to Medicine Health. I'm Dr. Paul, and we're doing a series on helpful therapies. Uh, this part of the series is called Movement as Medicine. So the first uh, little section we want to go into in Movement as Medicine is uh, resistance type of exercise versus uh, cardio type exercise. We just kind of talk about the differences between them and uh, why maybe a healthcare provider might, you know, uh, ask that you do one or the other or both of these. Now, obviously for most people, if you're, uh, you know, able to move around and, you know, do things, et cetera, it's nice to have a, some sort of a combination of these, as you'll see. Uh, but the, uh, many of the uh, experts in the world of, you know, exercise physiology, all that, uh, are, are now saying, you know, a lot of common sense things like, you know, we're, we have one body and uh, if we do one type, we're actually getting some of the other. Now it might be shifted, you know, in proportion, uh, but you actually, you know, because your body is not disconnected from your muscles, you, it knows what you're doing. So the idea with uh, cardio is that you're increasing your heart rate, and you are um, getting some sort of what they call a, aerobic exercise, right? So, and there's a whole type of exercises called aerobics, and that's not limited to just that. So you could do that by uh, walking very fast, running, uh, walking on a treadmill, riding a bike, anything that gets your heart rate moving. Uh, if you went out and you played uh, tennis or basketball and you're running around and your heart rate's up, you're getting some sort of cardio uh, workout. Now, there is a thing, uh, a physiological principle uh, that is called the anaerobic threshold in your body. And that is a threshold at which your uh, respiratory rate starts to rise. Now, the idea of aerobic metabolism is that your cells are receiving uh, the nutrient substrates that they run on, the energy uh, processes run on. And in, when they're in aerobic metabolism, they can take oxygen in, obviously, as they do, and uh, work the oxygen and work the uh, substrates from your nutrients all the way down through uh, for example, glycolysis, and then into the mitochondria. And uh, once you get into the mitochondria, whether you had glucose go in or whether you had uh, fats go into the mitochondria through a separate pathway, um, you also need oxygen in there to run uh, oxfos and create energy. So there is a place where you hit a, a threshold and that Threshold is based on how well trained your body is. So if you have a aerobic training, whether it's a fast walk or biking or running or whatever it is that you do, you notice in the beginning, it's not just your muscles are kind of tired, but also you breathe heavier, maybe your heart rate goes up more, et cetera. And part of that, especially with your breathing is when you hit the anaerobic threshold, which is where your uh, cells no longer have enough oxygen going in to uh, fulfill the needs to go all the way through, say, glycolysis and then into oxos and the mitochondria, they send signals out and uh, you get a, a sort of a little mild acidosis that goes on and that's your anaerobic threshold and that signals your brain to regulate your breathing up so that you get more air in, okay? The longer you train, the further out your anaerobic threshold goes. So if it used to be, you know, you'd get winded and out of breath immediately, or within the first minute or two, the longer you train, the further out that'll go, right? Now, what benefits physically would say cardio do? Well, if you're looking for immediate calorie burn, you've got an immediate calorie burn of about 20% higher than say resistance exercise, which is good to know. The thing is, is that uh, aerobic training or cardio, as we like to call it, uh, the, the calorie burn is during the session and there's not a lot of holdover in metabolic terms. Another thing that uh, cardio does is 
increases the endorphins in your brain, which are sort of local uh, chemicals, local little messengers that help uh, with a feeling of well-being and you know that sort of thing. So it can Im improve your mood. And then um, there is also a, a decrease in uh, central and peripheral stress signaling. And that's whether it's from physical stress or mental emotional stress, as we've talked about before, they're all perceived the same way by your body. And so um, as you go along, these benefits can uh, be felt by your body. You first are going to notice that your uh, your aerobic you know threshold is longer and longer. It takes you longer to get winded. You can do more mileage, whatever whatever way you're measuring things. But a lot of people also just say, you know, I just feel better after I do a workout. Well, part of that is the endorphin dump, and part of it is your stress system uh, kind of toning down. Now. I've had people, uh, patients tell me early in their uh, exercise bouts that they um, got actually agitated uh, when they were, you know, before they were really well trained early on, et cetera. And what will happen is, so that doesn't sound like endorphins and happy chemicals in the brain and everything. And they actually got like rageful and angry and all this stuff. Well, early on, before you're very well trained, um, what happens is that your body doesn't understand why you're, uh, why you're doing this physical activity. Your body just responds to what your uh, body and your brain are doing. And so one reason, uh, you know, just biologically, that our heart rate might go up fast and our skeletal muscle may start to move fast is that, you know, a bear is chasing us or someone's trying to kill us or something. And so your body has a response to that, especially when you're not very well uh, trained, you know, in, in cardio or resistance, et cetera. And that is to release adrenaline, also known as epinephrine, uh, so that it liberates uh, substrates for energy and things of that nature, in case you have to run away from a bear or fight someone off or whatever. Now, if you're, if you're not, and you're just out for a jog and all of a sudden you feel like this uh, rageful feeling or whatever, or shaky, that will go away. Now, there's a couple other things that mitigate it. Uh, if you've been fasting and you haven't eaten enough, sometimes that'll happen sooner. But a lot of it is just getting your body used to the idea of training so that then your body kind of goes into this mode of, oh, this is that thing that we do. We're not running from a bear or anything. Uh, we're just going out and getting on the treadmill or we're going for a hike or whatever it is that we're doing. So a lot of that is about training to get to like the happy brain chemistry, et cetera. Now, Cardio is one big area of helping your body to work better. But then resistance training is more specifically trying to move your larger muscles. So that would be arm, shoulder, chest, legs, especially, and then your core muscles that hold your body up. And so resistance uh, training can be done with all of those. And uh, that's very, very good for you for a few reasons that we'll talk about. One of the benefits of resistance training is that you have a longer calorie burn. So while cardio will burn up to 20% more calories immediately, it kind of stops after your cardio event is over and resistance will do things biologically to your muscles so that you uh, have a, a metabolism change that lasts after the workout, which is very important. So um, the calorie burn can go on longer. The other thing is that your metabolism can upregulate with skeletal muscle activity resistance work for one or two days after you have a workout. So your metabolism actually goes up. People are always worried about their slow metabolism or they're recovering from a disease and they have slow metabolism. One way to get your metabolism back in the game and to kind of kick it up a notch is to do some resistive exercise. Now, in our series on movement as medicine, we're gonna talk about you know healing up after injuries and other stuff like that. So we'll save that for that little section there. The other thing that, that resistance training does is increase your muscle mass. Now, 
it turns out that you don't have to be big and giant and, you know, have giant muscles all over to have an increase in muscle mass that makes a biological and a health difference for you. What we're finding now is that uh, people that can work their skeletal muscles, even a little more than they used to have chemistry shifts in their body that become less inflammatory, more prone to the right kind of immune chemistry, um, more prone to resistance from disease, more prone to all sorts of good things. And the important part about that is, yes, you'll get some of that with cardio, but you actually get more with resistance exercise. So then the next question that people often come up with is they'll say, well, you know, I'm not a, a power lifter or, you know, I've been sick or I've uh, whatever. Uh, or I'm just changing my life now and I want to get more active. Well, one of the best things that you can do is to move the biggest muscles that you can up to the point that you tolerate it. And it turns out that the major large muscle groups in your body are in your legs. So um, by uh, e even a sedentary person, by starting to stand and sit down more, for example, uh, or somebody maybe who's a little bit trained or does a lot of cardio and they start to do a little bit of leg work and some squats and things like that. And then if you can do the other bigger muscles, that's great. But the legs have the most uh, potent impact on resistive exercise initially because of the biggest mass of muscles. Then you go to your core muscles and your arms, et cetera. So you don't have to do a lot that's different for uh, that effect to come about. So you get a metabolism increase, you get a longer caloric burn, and uh, you also wind up with more muscle mass as you uh, go along. Now, there is the idea that um, muscle itself, muscle's metabolism is actually medicine. That's going to be uh, our next topic that we're going to talk about. So we won't get too much into metabolism here, except to say that um, by moving your body and by working the bigger muscles, you're doing resistive exercise. And that is very helpful for your metabolic health, for your long-term health, your resistant disease, et cetera. And even in things uh, such as, you know, some bad infections and cancer, et cetera, um, you can uh, have a better recovery if you're doing some kind of resistive uh, type exercise. Now, when we get to recovery exercise, we'll get into the details of that because obviously if you've just been through surgery or you've been through some other problem, um, you're not gonna go right back out, you know, start powerlifting or something like that right away. You have to kind of work into it. So we'll get into that too. So what about, um, you know, if, if you had to make a choice and you had to do one or the other, what would help? Well. Many experts that I've read, and I would agree with this because the body is not disconnected, will say do resistive exercise because your heart rate's still going to go up. Well, you, your, your, your brain knows what's going on. Now, when I was young, many, many decades ago, and I was an athlete, uh, when we were training, they would always say, you know, you got to do a, a cardio portion and a weight portion and keep things in balance. That's probably ideal. Uh, but you're going to get a little bit resistive exercise doing cardio and you're going to get a, a little cardio doing resistive exercise, but really the resistive exercise and its impact on your muscle as medicine for your body. is most important. All right. I'm Dr. Paul Anderson. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the notifications because sometimes we get marginalized on the, uh, on the apps uh, and uh, we'll get on to our next, uh, next section here coming right up.